liftoff. You're watching Spaceflight Now's coverage of the launch of Atlantis. So far, it's been a pretty spotless countdown. Once again, that little issue with the noise in the fuel cell, uh, which of course is how they generate electricity in space. Hydrogen and oxygen come together, make electricity, a byproduct is water. Wow, how cool is that? I mean, why, why can't I have one of those in my house? Maybe one day you will. And you can thank the space program if that does in fact happen. One of the big prime things on this mission, um, in addition to the fact that it's the, it's the last mission to bring a U.S. astronaut back from the space station on the shuttle, is to bring up these huge control moment gyros. These are, you think of a spinning top, think of a gyroscope and the properties it has. It tends to stay stationary, doesn't it? Because it's got that centrifugal force as it spins around. Well, if you, if you rig up three of these in different angles, perpendicular to each other, over the, the three axes of flight, you know what they are, right? You can actually control the space station's attitude as it, um, in, it engages in its free fall around the planet without having to waste a lot of propellant. So it's important to have those control moment gyros going to keep the space station where it should be in its orbit. Uh, there are four of them up there now, so three working, one's a spare, and there are going to be two more coming up on this space shuttle. It's uh, the kind of thing that would only fit in the cargo bay of a space shuttle, and that's why it is important that it go up there now. Now these, these CMGs, control moment gyros, have a 10-year warranty, and that's a good thing because they're getting close to uh, that 10-year mark. And they spin the whole time, 6,000 revolutions per minute. Nobody's out there squeezing three-in-one one oil in there. They just got to work. And uh, it's a testament to engineering and uh, good design. And I should tell you that that 10-year warranty, if the uh, Mars Spirit and Opportunity warranty is applicable in this case, these things will work for 100 years. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> right? And then I'm going to put our next guest on the, on the spot on that. Uh, Greg Vitus is here. Uh, he is with Boeing. Charlie Garisi is with Boeing, and he's got uh, a toy, which is always fun to have. Uh, Greg, first of all, let's talk about that that notion of you know warranty, warranties in flight, so to speak. Um, the, the control moment gyros that are up there have been there how long now? Well, two of them, two of them have been recently replaced, and the other two have been there since 2000. Actually, they've been there since 1999. They've been operating since 2001. Okay, 2001. So they'd be approaching that 10-year mark. There yes. were two that were replaced on a previous mission. Correct. What, that was fairly recent, as I recall. One was Flight 13A.1 uh -huh. in Station Lingo, and the other one was on the return to flight after okay. Columbia. So they, they're going to go out a little longer. But the, right. So the idea is putting the, these two up there as spares, latching them on, kind of put parking them in the, the, the station attic, if you will, right. uh, for use at a, at a future occasion. And that would require a spacewalk and all, all that kind of thing. But is, is the thinking now, with all this redundancy and, and the fact that these might work beyond the warranty, is the thinking now that the station could last, um, what, how much longer? Have oh, you yeah. you done the math on that? Well, uh, the four that are up there right now, currently operating, they're running perfectly normally, and we don't expect any of those to fail anytime soon. And uh, we've done things since the ones that we brought down came down, we've done things to help them last longer. And the two spares that are going up have been redesigned based on what we found, and so those should also last longer. So we really feel like uh, this should get us through station lifetime, whatever that ends up being determined to be. So you learned a little something. Over we the learned, years. We learned a lot the over the years. That's right. kind of the goal. So uh, can you give us a sense, without getting too deep in the technical weeds, uh, of what, what you saw when those CMGs, those old ones, came down? What, were there some basic things you learned about what to do to improve them? Well, we on, on my side, on the Boeing side, we help operate the CMGs. We did a lot of operational changes. Uh, Charlie here, who works with L3, they actually uh, uh, oversaw the teardown. and. So from an operational perspective, we, uh, the big thing we did was lower the gimbal rates, the rates at which those gimbals rotate. And uh, we also have flight software now that limits, limits the gimbal rates because one of the big things was that the gimbal rates were a contributor to the problem. It was moving too fast, right? flopping around. All right, try the greasy with yes. L3, the right. contractors. You're, well, subcontractor, I guess, is the way you right. put it. Uh, He's got a model here. First of all, when you talk about gimbal, that's what gimbling is, right? That, that kind of thing? That's correct. And, and you want to make sure that doesn't go degrees, too fast? Right. That's correct. 
the maximum gimbal rate is three degrees per second. Right. And we've never exceeded that, but we found that if we lowered that rate, we would extend the life of the CMGs. So what is so, it about that, the, the faster gimbal, no, even though that isn't that fast? Yeah, it's not that, it is really, yeah. it's very slow. Right. But what happens when you rate this spinning wheel that's going at 6,600 RPM, it puts a load into the bearings. Right. The spin bearings that support the rotor. And that load wants to move the bearings in and out. I see. And that motion creates a fretting or a wear. And we found on our, our, our evaluations that that wear had two materials that were very similar and they like to stick together. So we changed the materials to improve that stiction so they wouldn't stick. And that helps improve the life of the bearing. All right, so let me, let me ask you this. Something that sits in space on the outside, uh, encounters all the, the, the conditions you encounter in the course of low Earth orbit, has to last 10 years spinning around at 6,000 revolutions per minute and be able to do all those gimbals. How do you begin to design something like that? You sit back and, <laughs> and you, you look at material choices are important, so you've got to pick materials that don't wear. The most critical thing on any device that's constantly op operating and, and rotating is lubrication. Right. You have to keep your fits lubricated. Well, we have a very unique uh, system that constantly adds oil to the spin bearings and that helps give its life of 10 years and more. It's not like you're changing the oil. No, the we're just adding, adding new oil. So it comes up with a big 10-year supply of oil, no, essentially? No, it's not big. It's only about 10 or 11 grams. 10, so I, 10 <laughs> grams of oil? A gram a year? Well, about a gram a year. Right, you got to explain mm -hmm. how that works. Well, the bearing doesn't take a whole lot of oil to stay lubricated. Right. It takes a very thin oil between the rotating ports, mm -hmm. and that's called, in technical terms, elastohydrodynamic film which is kind of like, in, we in big words. Right we need the PhD guy here. <laughs> that, right. it, it, it's like uh, driving your car and when you hit a puddle of water, you, you hydroplane. Oh, I know that. And that keeps yeah. the two parts separated so they right. don't wear. Okay. You, need a lot of, you don't need a lot of oil, but you need good oil to keep that separation so the parts don't wear. So what kind of oil do you buy for this? Well, we have an oil that's very, very old. It's off the market right now, but it's been a space-proven lubricant, and it's called uh, Kendall KG80 oil. It's a Kendall product. Really? now off the market and we stockpiled it because that's our heritage and we like to always fly heritage devices and it is it's a fossil oil it's, it's a it's super not a refined synthetic. mineral oil yeah, yeah that's mineral correct oil. Mineral no oil. kidding and it's it's kendall like you know yeah that, that's the old name kendall. regular oil yeah so <laughs> and there's no way to refill the oil on orbit if there, yeah, there were is a no or a leak or whatever right, that would there's be there's no there's yeah. no refill mechanism Interesting. Now, it was, was that something they considered early on or when you were doing the design? When or? we designed, this is really a, a, a design that was pedigreed way back to Skylab. Really? And I worked on Skylab <laughs> 42 you really? years ago, yeah. Oh, you, so, you, you look pretty good, my yeah, boy. You're doing all right. <laughs> He's doing all right. So, when you're he does very well, yeah. yeah. That design yeah. was on Skylab and, and it flew Skylab very well, but Skylab was only a very short mission. So it you was see, only like 90 days. You're a lot like what you build. You're still spinning around 6,000 <laughs> RPMs 10, years, 10 yep. years later, 20 years later. That's good. All right, give us give us a quick primer on how this thing here. We'll put, I'm gonna put it in the middle. Okay. You, you can help in on this. Sure. How does it work? Tell help help a okay. layperson understand how this thing works. So there's there there are four of these mounted on the back of the Z1 truss. Right. And so they these rotate spins at 6600 this is RPM. Spinning. That's what spins. This spins and both gimbals rotate, so you can position this spinning wheel in any direction. Right. And so all four of them work together as commanded automatically by the. Uh, control software in the computers in the lab so they control the four CMGs to counteract all of the external disturbances that are acting on the space station so, so in other words when somebody gets in the treadmill these CMGs have to kind of compensate for uh, some of that stuff right? it's, it's really bigger things like yeah. solar arrays rotating robotic operations uh -huh. um, now, if they exercise hard enough, I guess it yeah, could I mean, affect it. Really, yeah. no, Charlie Hobot, man, he's got some guns. I bet, I bet he makes those CMGs go. But you, it's not like uh, an astronaut on board the station no. has to decide which CMG to spin. The computers oh, no. figure that all, all out, right? Four, all four spinning. Computers figure out where to put them so that we maintain non-propulsive attitude control and don't have to hand over to the Russians. Uh, the operators on the ground also command them occasionally to reset them after we've gone into a period of thruster control. All right. So they just reset the gimbal angles into a good position so that we can start up and not use thrusters. All right. Greg Vitus, Charlie Garisi. Hope I did that. You did that. That was perfect. On your names, yeah. Boeing and L3 respectively. And uh, I'm going to keep this. Is that all right? No. no. no, no. <laughs> My PR people right. don't like that. <laughs> you keep spinning there, guy, Mr. Skylab. Boy, we should have kept Skylab up there. We sure we? should That's have. That's a whole other story, yep, you, you know? Bet.
And let's let's hope we learn the lessons of Skylab with this station, right? Yes, that's true. Very let's not true. Let's prematurely keep it going. bring it down, and certainly we don't want it to clunk anybody's head. But that's, that's another right. story mm -hmm. entirely. Gentlemen, thank you both very much.